Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this episode which is number two we're going to continue to prepare the Van Diemen RF85. We're going to be dealing with the seat, the adjustment of the pedals, the battery and the fire extinguishing system and some of the cabling inside the cockpit and of course there will be a little bit of cleaning up in the cockpit as well. So without any further ado let's start. In the previous episode, we tried to start the car on its internal battery, which is this one right here. And that didn't work too well. I have tried to charge it up, but that didn't work. So that battery is basically gone. So I will need to replace this battery and I'm going to replace it with a smaller version. This is a gel based battery and it delivers about 20 amps hour which is not a hell of a lot, but more than enough for the race car uh, to keep running. This is a very well-known brand and the good thing about gel-based batteries is that you can place them in any position you like to place them. And a gel-based battery is still acid-based, but there is kind of a silicon substrate added to it, so it makes it into a gel, so it can't leak. So this is quite safe for a race car. And there is a reason why I want to keep it that small as well, because first of all, I will need to install it. I don't have a lot of space, but I also want to constrain the weight. Now, in racing, everything is about weight. So if I put this battery on the scale, you'll notice it's about 5,171 grams. If I put the blue one, the original battery onto the scale, my scale will go off because it only goes to five kilograms. So you see I have an error, but the blue one is in essence a kilogram heavier. The battery is sitting right here. So just in front of your legs where your legs are sitting and this is a fairly big battery. Uh, it's not that big of course, but I like to put a smaller in. So let me show you that. See here we have our red top battery which is actually a lot, lot smaller. Now this fits a lot nicer, doesn't it? Of course, I will have to make a bracket around it so it is fully supported, um, both on the bottom and on the top, because now it's resting on a couple of uh, blind nuts. You can see that if the battery is here and the fire extinguisher is here, there is not a lot of space in this opening for your legs to come through. And keep in mind that even the steering uh, rod is even going down. So it's really squeezing things. And if all these parts are here, it's going to be hard to slide over with my legs over it. So I prepared something different, kind of a metal panel that goes over all this. So both over the battery and over the fire extinguisher. And that will allow me, my feet, not to get caught. This is the panel, a light piece of aluminum that we're going to put over the battery and over the fire extinguisher. So let me show you how that fits before we start installing the battery and the bracket and the fire extinguisher. So here is that panel. Now I know I haven't put the fire extinguisher in nor the battery, but that doesn't really matter to show that to you on how this is going to fit. All right. So this is how this is going to go. So I'm just preparing the panel to support the seat in the back. Because remember, I need to move my seat forward. So I'm just going to cut this to size and then we can bend it. I want to fit this absolutely correct, otherwise it's bent. Oops. Now, that should be good. This is a panel that I already have pre-banded. There's still something that goes on top here, but the part we just formed on the bench is going to go underneath, like so. And then I'm gonna lock this down with some rivets. I could of course also weld it if I wanted to, but I'm not gonna weld on this. And this is gonna provide me a pretty strong support for my seat, which is gonna come across it. So the seat will slide over this partially. All right, so uh, let me mark this up and then uh, 
we start to um, put the rivets in and then we can install this. Now on the bottom, before I'm going to install this, I will install here a anti-vibration piece of plastic so it doesn't rattle on top of the uh, fuel tank. Now the fuel tank is a real thick piece of aluminum so that's pretty solid. All right, so this is the part that we're gonna rivet onto this part. And this is gonna come on like so. You just need to mark the holes and we should be all set. So to put this together, I will use some four millimeter rivets. Now the red stuff I will pull off once we install it on top of the gas tank and this is the protection between the gas tank and the aluminum panel that we just made. So this is the part that we have just fabricated and the seat will come right here. Now to keep that distance on the seat I'm having a piece of 40 millimeter um, insulation that will come under this. I will glue this to the gas tank uh, so that way we have a very good support for the seat. But as you can see the back panel here looks a little bit tacky so now we need to clean up this aluminum before we install everything. To clean the aluminum I'm using this product which is really a great product for cleaning aluminum. Uh, there's also one for chrome, this is the chrome version. It really works great, so I'm not making a commercial for these two products, but they are really good and you'll see it in a few seconds how good they are. So I'm just going to do a little corner for you guys to show on how good this product works and I'm going to do this corner here. So you put the stuff on your um, piece of cloth and then you polish it. You see it becomes black. Don't do this in the full sun because that would not be good. And you can see how this comes along quite nice. So this is what I'm going to do for the rest of this panel to get it all cleaned up. We're going to build the battery box now. And for that, I'm using 1.5 millimeter aluminum. So I'm just gonna cut it now from this big uh, panel that I still have. And then we're gonna start bending it. I just wanna make sure that I slide it in far enough. That's the only drawback on this thing that you can't see it really. So that's the panel we're going to work with. So this is our battery box. The battery will go in like this. And of course she is now loose in it, but we will put some locks on it. And these are the locks that I'm going to use. Like so. And then I'm going to bend a metal bar or aluminum bar 
all along. So it locks to that and locks to that so I can actually flip that open and close. So that should be working quite well and I'm going to do this all with rivets. So you'll see me doing that. First thing I'm going to do now is start marking this side here. So I know exactly where to bend it. Okay. So that's been bent. It's going to go like this. Now let's see how far we got this. So I think I will cut this guy right here. I have riveted the first part. Now I'm going to do the bottom part here and lock that to the frame. There we go. And then we'll do the other side. Here it is, so let me fit the battery. Because of course, I have to be able to remove and insert the battery whenever I need to. Now the battery is in, and now I can clamp it into place. Here we go. So now the battery is solid in it, it cannot move, and I can always put a split pin through this opening here, so that is perfect. I just might need to move it up a little bit. And I think this is going to be all right. Now, you don't need to move the battery in and out too often, but that's the way it will work. I bolted down the battery box, and now I can actually lock that up. All I need to do now is connect the power, but this is not for now because I need to rerun some of those cables. Everything on this car is really a very, very tight fit. So I was just trying to fit the seat in and I had to enforce it in a couple of places. The problem you always have with the seat is that the seat belts are in the way of them. All right, so. As you can see, I have corrected the seat here. Um, it wasn't long enough anymore because I slided the seat forward. So I had to install a piece of aluminum on it. So now I'm gonna lock down those seat belts and then we install the seat. All right, so let's see if we can get the seat in. And this is going to be a little bit of fiddling. Now this part here, um, I don't need to glue this because this isn't going anywhere. It's caught behind the seat. So let's see if we will be able to get it properly in. Um, all right, so let's uh, bolt it down. So let's test the seat out and I have my boots on, which is really not something you should wear because that is not going to help you much in uh, getting your feet all the way down. So let's see. All right, now that says good, really. Um, I might do something here to move that cushion a bit forward so the helmet will have support. Uh, but for the rest, this feels pretty good. Um, I can touch the pedals, uh, not really a lot. I can just depress them a little bit. So I think they need to come forward that much. So here we got the throttle, we got the brake and we have the clutch and it's a bit difficult uh, to reach. So I will have to extend these uh, pedals. Now I could move the whole pedal box forward normally, but on this car that doesn't seem to be the case. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to drill bigger holes in the frame. Instead, I'm going to extend and rework the top parts of these pedals. So let me take this one out and show you uh, how it's going to look like once we are all done.
because I already have made one, and then we'll make one together. So here it is. Um, this is the new brake pedal that we have just built, and this is the old one. And you can see it's a bit of a difference. I made them a little bit smaller, as you can tell, and a little bit higher. So I started off with a two and a half millimeter steel plate and with holes in it to make it a bit lighter. And then I grinded off the corners. Next, I'm going to give it a little bit of a curve, maybe just a little bit more. All right. So now we have this nice little curve on it. So this is the original pedal that was on it and the bolt is actually 3 8 uh, 24. Now, I don't have a rod or a bolt like this, so I need to pull some thread on a piece of steel that I have. And then I'm going to remake this whole pedal because that looks a little bit tacky. But at the end, we will get it all sorted out. So this is now finished and ready to be welded onto the pedal. So I put my racing shoes on. I'm sitting quite comfortable and the pedal is well within reach, so that is good. The throttle needs to be extended, but we haven't done that yet. And now I still need to do the clutch. Now I can reach the clutch just, but it needs to come up at least this far, the same as the brake. I didn't show you on how you weld the rod onto the front side of the pedal, but that's pretty straightforward stuff. Um, so I adjusted them, so now that the right spot, brake is good, clutch is good, and the throttle. So now we're going to start on the dashboard. This little bottle here is Novak, and Novak is a fire suppression gas to be installed in race cars. Uh, it doesn't have to be bigger than this for the car. I have two nozzles in the cockpit and three nozzles actually in the engine bay, and that should be more than sufficient. And when Novak gas, uh, escapes uh, on the side when you pull the handle then it's covering the fire like it's kind of a blanket and it takes the oxygen away so the fire actually stops. So this is supposed to be pretty good stuff. This was serviced about a year ago so we had a refill on this so you don't need always to buy new ones and you can see we have the tag still on there you know lifeline. So we'll install this in a few seconds and uh, then at the last thing we'll do is install the battery. So now it's time for the dashboard. I'm going to take note of what I'm disconnecting because um, otherwise I might forget and the color code on the cables might not be accurate anymore because otherwise I will forget. So the temperature meter and also the oil pressure meter, which is this one here, are both uh, mechanical types. So they have pipes going to it and you can't put them into a bezel unless you rerun the whole circuit. And I have no intention to run this all the way through the car. So I will have to find another solution for this. I'm probably going to cut one of the edges open so I can just slide it through and then I'm going to fill that up again with something. You might see a small cut, but hey, um, it's too much work otherwise. And now we have it removed. So I'm going to put this back. I've taken my old dashboard or bezel and I traced it with a pen. And now we can basically cut it out. I already have cut it on the sides. Now we need to cut a little bit more with the snips. Now this is aluminum of one and a half millimeters. All right. That doesn't look too good. Uh, I need to remark this. Right. 
now we do this large radius. The edges will take care with a file. I still need to cut out this piece here. That's a little bit more tricky. That's why I do little piece by little bit. Now I'm going to start with those two and for that one I'm going to use a hole saw. I don't know if I have the right dimensions but let me check real quick. Uh, this is like 52 millimeters. I checked it on the meter as well, it's also 52 and this is also 52. So I think uh, this would just be about right. So I'm going to cut out those two first and then I'll cut out that one. Now that's a bigger one, let's see. And for that, um, that's the biggest one I have. So I'll cut it, but I may have to correct it a little bit afterwards. Uh, these things are easy. Uh, I've got the different sizes for those, so that should be no problem whatsoever. So, uh, let's start with those two. And these are very useful tools. Um, this is bimetal, so it's pretty strong as well. So, you just turn it to lock it. The dashboard is mounted with these little rubbery shock absorbers and as typical one side has come off. Uh, this you find often with old pieces. I ordered some of those, hopefully I can get them, but in between I'm going to create some little bushes from an aluminum bar. For now at least I can get the dashboard on because I don't know when I'm going to get these parts. So. I always keep uh, little pieces of metal laying around and never throw anything away because sometimes uh, you can use this. Now this bar here is from a curtain. So here's the panel that we've made. I have drilled all the holes and I think that should fit properly now. Yeah. Okay, so that should be it. So I think this is looking all right. Um, the edges I will um, protect with a rubber band and you'll see that in a few seconds. So now I'm going to coat my panel and Either it's going to be powder coated or it's going to be uh, matte black. I'm not sure yet. I need to do a few tests first of what looks best. I'm, I'm just going to try out uh, to see how that works if I paint a panel in matte black and then I would start to engrave something on it. So for instance, uh, let's say power, no, let's say ignition. That's how it would look like on the bezel if I was to engrave it. Um, I think that looks reasonable okay, so I might just do that. I'm sending it down with a grid 400 so it's a little bit more rough so the paint sticks better on the aluminum. So I painted the aluminum panel and then I just mounted it back in place where the previous dashboard was. I did the engraving on it and then of course I connected all the dials. So now the last thing to do is to protect this edge here for which I'm using this plastic rubber that goes on the sides. It's a bit of 
pushing to get it on. It's really, really windy outside. So that is on. This is now nicely and tightly on. All what we need to do now is to cut it off over here and then we're all done on the dashboard. The last two things I installed was the fire extinguisher and the battery. Now, normally when you crawl in the car, your feet are going to hit these things and I don't like that too much. So I kind of prepared a thick piece of plastic that I can put in front of my battery so it doesn't make any shorts. And this is the panel that I will put over it. Like so. And then we can bolt this down. And that's it guys, for the front of this car at least. And in the next episode, we're going to do some more mechanical work. So folks, we've come to the end of this video and hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. In the next episode, we're going to take care of the engine. We're going to change the engine oil. We're going to change the gearbox oil. We're going to check the gearbox and we're going to check all the brakes and all the bolts. And also we're going to change the brake fluid and we're going to change the cooling liquid. Once all that is done, it probably will be ready for its shakedown on the 19th of April. And hopefully I make it. Thank you for viewing. And bye-bye.